Newton's laws of motion. Why do we need to know them? Let's find out in this video. The Newton's laws of motion are essential because they relate to everything that we do or see in everyday life. These laws tell us how things move or stay still, why we don't float out of our bed, and why we don't fall through the floor of our house. These laws of motion were actually proposed by Isaac Newton. So Isaac Newton is one of the most influential scientists of all time, and his ideas became the basis for modern physics. He is more known for his works in studying gravity and the motion of planets, but he also proposed the three laws of motion, which we would be highlighting in this video. Okay, so the three laws include first the law of inertia, second we have the law of acceleration, and third we have the law of action and reaction. Okay, so the first law is the law of inertia, but what is inertia? Inertia is actually a term used to measure the ability of an object to resist a change in its state of motion. So it came from the Latin word inertus, which could be translated to mean lazy. Okay? So an object with a lot of inertia takes a lot of force to start or stop, and an object with a small amount of inertia require, requires a small amount of force to start or stop. So the first law of inertia actually states that an object at rest stays at rest and an object in motion stays in motion with the same speed and in the same direction unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. Okay, as you could see in the image, you have there a ball which is at rest, but once you put an unbalanced force, let's say you kick the ball, the ball will now be in motion and it will just continue to be in motion unless it is acted on by an unbalanced force. So example, it hits a net which exerts now another um, force. Okay. So here, why is it easy to stay awake until 6 a.m. but so hard to wake up at 6 a.m.? Okay, so things in motion tends to stay in motion while things tend uh, while things at rest tend to stay at rest. So there is already an application of the law of um, inertia in in our daily activity. Okay, so yeah, and here's an example. So you see the sleeping guy. So he is at rest, but the once you apply an external force. So this is just an example. I just um, find this a little funny. So I included this in our video. Okay, so you could also think of other um applications of the first law of motion, okay? So what is force, okay? So force is an action that can change motion, okay? It is a requirement for our first law, okay? So a force is what we call a push or a pull or any action that has the ability to change an object's motion, okay? So it can be used to increase the speed of an object, decrease its speed, or even change the direction in which an object is moving. Okay, so these force greatly affects the motion of an object. Now let's go to the second law of acceleration. Okay, so while Newton's first law of motion predicts the behavior of objects for which all existing forces are balanced, in our second law, it actually pertains now to the behavior of objects for which all existing forces are not balanced. Okay, so the second law actually states that the acceleration of an object is dependent upon two variables, the net force acting upon the object and the mass of the object. Okay. So here, if you apply more force to an object, it would accelerate at a higher rate. Okay. So in the first picture, you see the mass you have here, um, this is this represents uh, the mass of the object and then you apply the force. So, basically, if you apply more force, it would have more acceleration. But, if an object has more mass, it accelerates at a lower rate because mass has inertia. Okay? So, if you now have more object, 
objects. Okay, so you have um, it it would represent no more mass. So you need to exert more force for it to have a greater acceleration. But if you're going to apply the same force, there would be a lesser acceleration. Okay. So, Newton's second law of motion can be formally stated as follows. Okay? The acceleration of an object is produced by net force is directly proportional to the magnitude of the net force in the same direction as the net force and inversely proportional to the mass of the object. Okay? So, this verbal statement can be expressed in this formula, this equation. So, acceleration is equal to force divided by mass. Okay, so our units for acceleration is meter per second squared. For force, we're going to use newtons. And for mass, we're going to use kilogram. Okay, so these are also the other forms of the second law. So you may use the first formula if you want to find the acceleration and you know the net force and the mass. Okay, the second formula F is equal to mass times acceleration is used if you want to find the net force and you already know the acceleration and the mass of the object. While the third one could be used if you are looking for the mass of an object and the acceleration and the net force is already provided. Okay, basically, you don't need to memorize all this formula. So once you already know one, you could derive from the original formula. So last law, the third law is the law of action and reaction. Okay, so formally stated, um, Newton's third law says that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So it basically means that in every interaction, there is a pair of forces acting on the two interacting objects. Okay, so the size of the force on the first object equals the size of the force on the second object. Okay, so the direction of the force on the first object is opposite to the direction of the force on the second object. Okay, so this law actually tells us that force always comes in pairs. Okay, so it is equal and opposite action reaction force pairs. Okay, so applications of this law could actually see there, for example, um, when you shoot a gun. The recoil force on the gun is the reaction. There is a reaction, and its action is the accelerating force of the bullet. Okay, so when you are walking, there's also the reaction of your foot in your um, in the floor. Okay, so the floor pushes up and forward while your foot actually pushes down and back. So another is once you are. Um, um, uh, what do you call this? Once you are getting off a boat, so your action, the boy's feet, for example, in this image, the boy's feet exert force on the boat while the boat also exerts force on the feet. Okay, so the loss of motion could actually be observed in everyday activities. Okay, so for example, um, the motion of a ball falling. Okay, so it is in motion, but once it hits the floor, the floor would now exert an unbalanced force, so it would now cause the falling motion of the ball to stop. Okay, so another is the, for example, a model rocket being launched up into the atmosphere. So these examples are applications of the first law of motion. Second law, for example, once you ride a bicycle, okay, so when you do the pedaling, so the muscles, the leg muscles pushing on the pedals of the bicycle is the force, while the bicycle would be the mass, okay? Or another example of your second law is when you do your groceries, when you do, when you push the cart, okay? So initially, once you start um, roaming around the supermarket, so the push cart is lighter, so you just exert um, a smaller force. But once you put your um, groceries already, so you put in your cereals, your, for example, you buy lots of um, food. So anything that you put on your cart would have, um, would increase the mass now of your push cart. Okay, so you need not to exert more force so that you could easily move your 
part. Okay, so these are applications of your second law. Now, for the third law of motion, we have already presented different examples. So another, for example, um, you hit a wall with a certain amount of force. Okay, so as you can see in the picture right now. Okay, so if you are exerting the amount of force, the wall actually returns the same amount of force. Okay, so those are applications of the third law of motion. And there are also a lot of activities wherein you could observe the laws of motion. Okay, so I hope this video um, provided um, a clear explanation of the different laws of motions. So if you have questions, you may comment them down below and just wait for my response. Okay? I hope you learned something. I'll see you in the next video. Bye! Thank you.